Welcome to rebuilding a model steam plant at part 35. Completing the steam turret by fitting the three steam taps and some temporary mounting columns. The steam taps that I'm going to use in this plant are quarter by 40 threads per inch. And these will accept union cones for 4mm or 532nd pipe. I'm sure that some viewers may be thinking, why am I going to use three steam taps when I only need to supply steam to the two engines fitted to the plant? The third tap has a dual purpose. It will allow a third engine to be connected to the boiler. And it will also allow compressed air to be connected to the boiler to run the steam plant using, well, compressed air. Sometimes compressed air running is just a very convenient way of running a steam plant. Over now to my smart and brown lathe with a large four-jaw self-centering chuck. And I'm drilling the ends of the turret with a 7 seconds of an inch diameter drill, which is tapping size for quarter by 40. The normal way to thread components by hand is to rotate the chuck as I'm showing here. The only problem is that this is quite a large lathe with an equally large chuck and turning it by hand is difficult. And it's not a very sensitive way of doing it. It would be quite easy to snap off the tap. So now it's top tip time, a better way of doing the job. Instead of turning the main chuck, I'm turning the tailstock chuck. It's not firmly pressed into the taper, so it turns with ease. When using a small lathe like a Myford or a Boxford, it's easy enough to turn the chuck, but really this chuck is far too big for a job like this. That's one end complete. I repeat the process for the other end. As you can see, I'm not drilling very far down into the turret. It's just far enough to accept a quarter by 40 thread of a double steam union. In case any viewers are worried about wearing the taper in the tailstock chuck, I'm fairly certain that this amount of threading will not do that. But there are a lot of very fussy viewers who watch my channel, so I will mention that if you're worried about wearing the tailstock taper, oil it. Once again, it's the basic difference between the home workshop and industry. It would take an awful lot of time to wear the tailstock chucks taper by threading in the lathe like this, unless, of course, you did it every day, eight hours a day. This threading operation raised a very slight burr on the end of the work. That's why I'm remachining the end part and making it a little bit smaller, which looks better and also removes the burr. And that is about all the machining required on the manifold. Time now to return to the workbench and re-thread some quarter by 40 elbows from PM Research. The thread pitch is slightly different from the USA to the ones in England. I'm showing an interesting way of re-threading these parts very quickly. I've screwed a length of PM Research quarter-inch brass tubing into one end of an elbow. This piece of quarter by 40 threaded brass tubing is a perfect fit in the elbows. But here's the clever bit. As it's a piece of brass tubing, all the swath from the threading operation finds its way down the tube and out which is a good thing because the further away from your hands this stuff gets, the better it is. I can almost do this job now on autopilot, but a word of warning, I'm using a tap with a point on the end. This is what happened when I wound the tap in a little bit too far. That's one PM Research elbow for the scrap bin. What I intend to do is fit one of these double steam unions to each of the elbows. And this clip shows very clearly that I'm applying some Loctite 542 thread sealant to the threads before assembling them. After a while, they look like this. I could have just made some quarter by 40 inserts, but I prefer to use the double unions with the hexagon part on. I am now applying some Loctite 542 to the other end. And you will notice that I'm not applying very much. You really don't need very much. Now I'm screwing the steam tap into the other end of the elbow. This clip shows the first of the steam taps in position. Now it's time to fit another steam tap into the end in exactly the same way. Starting as always with some Loctite 542 thread sealant. Here you can see two taps in position. And after re-threading yet another PM Research elbow, 
it's time to use Loctite 542 for the final time to seal all the threads to make the steam tap and double union steam tight. This clip shows the manifold with all three taps fitted and I really do like this style. It's good to have the steam taps away from each other and not bunched together in the middle of a manifold block. Without the elbows it would have looked a bit stupid with the taps sticking out left and right and vertical. Doing it this way to my eye looks a lot better. It's a bit like the Industrial Revolution meets Steampunk. I place the manifold in its approximate position. It's obviously going to bolt down onto the baseboard. And just in case you're wondering, I'm not going to use tubing, I'm going to use solid brass bar, which will have some threaded fittings at either end. More about that in the next episode. Just out of curiosity, I wondered what the distance was between the two uprights. And as can be clearly seen here, the distance between the centres of the uprights is 7 eighths of an inch. I think I will probably make the part that fastens this steam turret to the baseboard using a piece of brass. I will give it some thought, but for now I have to go. Please stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.